Everybody, you did it. You made it. We're here. Spring game. EVVVV, depending on when you're watching this with the X's and Knowles presented by Knowles 24 7 crew. I'm here with Adam. I'm here with Kevin Little. I'm here with myself, Trey Roland, and we are here to give you a spring game preview, quasi spring football review, slash how to actually watch a spring game if you've never seen one before. We're just jamming it all, we're just jamming it all in for you. We're giving you everything that you need because we love you and we care about you. But only if you're subscribed to Knowles247.com. I think they got a big fat transfer portal 60% off deal right now. If you're not in on that, you are a nerd, a loser, and a derelict. Figure it out. It's a great deal, and you'll be super informed. You'll be the cool guy at the office to all the Knoll fans. Just take all of our analysis and pretend like it's your own thoughts, and people will be very impressed by your intelligence. Works great. Can you be yeah. all three of those things? Is that possible? Yes, yeah, yeah, dude, yeah. For, I, I think so. I said it, and everything I say yeah. is correct. So let's see here we go. Like, hey, we're gonna start off hot. You're gonna question the host. This is ridiculous and combative. I, I figured we'd have this combative nature right off the bat. Well, anyway, <laughs> let's get into it before my co-host disagree with me again. <laughs> All right. Spring game setup, and it's really like the culmination. We'll get into the format, what we want to what we want to see, what we expect, everything like that. But it, how has spring gone for you, Adam? Have you been genuinely pleased? What are some standouts? Like, what what is your just your total analysis of Florida State's spring football practice period so far? Um, I always lean towards spring is. I don't want to say irrelevant, but I probably should have started with Kevin. There's so much noise. <laughs> there's so just there's a lot of noise that comes out of spring, and it's it's. So you do, you never know how many guys are not participating. So many guys, you know, they've gotten things cleaned up over from the last season, and th- there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes in spring that you aren't aware of. Um, so I always take everything with spring with a real big grain of salt. Um, sure, but I think it's fair to say I've been um, wondering how the defensive line was progressing and questioning whether the impact pass rush was going to be there from the defensive end position. It sounds like Marvin Jones Jr. has uh, started to cement himself as a as an opposite or as a player across from uh, on, on the opposite side with um, Patrick Payton, which is a big positive because obviously, uh, you know, if you're talking pass rush, this is a former five-star recruit. You want to, uh, you know, you want to see him come on. Right and and have a have a strong year this year. So that's a big time positive. Um, there are little things, it, you know, a lot of a lot of good takeaways about DJU and what he's been doing and how he's been picking up the playbook. Um, I wanted to see him be able to kind of establish himself and be comfortable and start to play with some have some tempo through practices. And sounds like all those things are going on. So there's been a lot of positives. Um, you know, they need to finish the week strong, finish the, the, the spring game strong, put on a good show, and then the portal. <laughs> Can't wait. So much fun, especially on Nose 24-7. If you're not, you're those three adjectives that I described you as earlier. And, Adam, <laughs> I like that you mentioned DJ Uyangalale. I like that you mentioned Marvin Jones Jr. because those were two guys that improved throughout spring football, right? Mm-hmm. You got some mixed – a lot of people questioning DJ's DJ's weight or whatever coming into spring, his fitness level. Think. He's a big, he's a big lad from the islands. They've got big their their arm bones are like their thigh bones, man. They're built different, and I love them a lot. But anyways, he had that, and then there was the, the talks of Marvin Jones Jr. flashing, but consistency issues. But if you notice, if you are on Knowles 247com that those two players have really started to assert themselves and really get a nice upward trajectory, which is what you like to see with a spring period where you're integrating so many new pieces. Jordan Travis is gone. Keon Coleman, Johnny Wilson on the defensive side, Jared verse, Braden Fisk, Fabian Lovett, two new linebackers really to break in. DJ Lundy had to like re break him. He just had a little ski trip in Colorado for a second, but there's a lot of stuff that you had to integrate that you hadn't had to the past couple of years. There's been a lot of sameness. There's been a lot of familiarity. 
Kevin, you're our only guy out of three that's on location in Tallahassee. Of the spring football that you watch, who were some of the standouts to you? Some of the things, or maybe even not even just standouts, maybe some guys that really surprised you when you got to take a look at them in person. Well, I'll say just like general vibes first. I um, love vibes. I'm a big vibes guy. A big vibes <laughs> guy. So like yeah. compared to last year, I, I think you've got a really just solid floor of this team. Um mm. You see the athleticism, you see like all around every position has guys that you feel comfortable putting out there Two deep guys. Um, I mean, if you compare it to like two years ago, you know, AZ Thomas came in as a borderline five star, a four star, five star, and he would look different. You know, he was he was a guy that everybody was kind of clamoring about as a true freshman. This year you have, you know, equally physically talented kids come in. You know, nobody's talking about it. And I think that's just that's a testament kind of where this team is getting in terms of, you know, the the standard is higher than it was two years ago. Um, and I, I would say, like, even even amongst the like depth pieces, your depth pieces look better than they did last year. Um, but there's I, I think what you're seeing less and less of the like Johnny Wilson made another catch that looked like an NFL catch. Keon Coleman mm -hmm. did something. <clears throat> there's also less talk about like last year. It felt like they were one step ahead that they were doing fall install stuff in spring. That's a good and, point. Yeah. Um, they're, they're not at that point. So, so yeah. I think, I think they've built a base onto this program. That's, that's higher than it was last year, but I don't think that they're hitting those marks of just excelling. Um, and that's, that's to be expected. You're breaking in a new quarterback. You're, you're breaking in a bunch of new skill players. You're breaking in an almost an entirely new defensive front um, and linebacker core. So, you know, there, there's some some change to be had. I, I I don't think they're quite at the the level where, you know, we're we're anticipating them to be what they were last year. But I think, like AB was saying, as the spring has progressed, there's been a lot of positivity, a lot of a lot of progress in places where you needed to see progress. And so uh, I'm encouraged by that. Um, and, you, you know, I, I think that I'll kind of mimic what AB was saying. And you need DJ to be good. You need Marvin Jones Jr. to be good. Those, those two guys are going to win a lot of football games if they are playing to their potential. Absolutely. And they're guys that, like you said, once they, when you get the quarterback in and the timing gets dialed in that can raise that that's going to raise everybody's level of play on that side of the ball. Same thing with the defensive line is clicking. You start to get guys like Shaheem Brown, DJ Lundy asserting themselves. Mm -hmm. There's a big leadership vacuum over on that side of the ball. Maybe even people like Sione Lolohea. Once those newer guys get comfortable, I think that once that breaking in period and you saw it from the practice reports, there's a breaking in period of, Everybody integrating, everybody learning how Mike Norvell likes to practice, learning terminology. I think that you're going to see the level of progression and improvement kind of improve like exponentially. And of course, it is going to be different than last year's team. You're probably not going to see a lot of like circus catch, jump ball, like write ups, because there's not a Johnny Wilson or a Keon Coleman on this right. team. You might start to read some different write ups of guys like Jalen Lucas, Ja'Kai Douglas getting loose, maybe the offensive lineman kind of like road grading with Richie Leonard, TJ Ferguson, and those running backs. It's going to look different, and it's that's why this is such an intriguing spring to me. Let's talk about the spring game format in itself, which is – that's intriguing just because it's a little bit different. Uh, <laughs> we we have our own mixed reviews of it. We're football guys. We want to see live reps all the time. Exactly. You don't want to see spring game injuries, so we get no. it. But, Adam, give everybody a refresher because because Mike Norvell's press conference today, today being Tuesday, whenever you're watching this, he, he talked on Tuesday. It's going to be the same format as years past, so give our beautiful – fresh face, energetic, intelligent, vivacious viewers. Oh, Just a refresh. A little positive thing. adjectives. Um, in the past, they've done like specialty or not, I'm sorry, they've done like red zone work to start and then they'll get into some game situation stuff. Um, you know, no, no live specialists, but they would often starts with the ball at like the 20 or whatever and, and uh -huh. against a defense uh, and it obviously be mixed squads. And then they mix in like special teams drills between, but like simulate quarters or something like that. I, I don't, 
It's a lot of stuff. It's a lot of movement. Yeah, it's a lot of it's, kinetic it's, energy. They they utilize every second of it as a practice scenario. Um, they treat it very much like a a big practice with people there. Um, with like so a, they, with the scrimmage tacked on at the end. Yeah. So they do. They're going to do their situational work in the red zone. They're going to do the drills that they like to do with special teams, uh, some competitive stuff. They're going to give you some game situations at, uh, uh, like a scrimmage. And then at the end, they're going to do the 1999 um, team captains are going to come out. And uh, I can't remember who they are, though. I don't have it in front of me. I, that maybe would have been smart. Um, they're <laughs> going to come out. They're going to be coaches, offensive and defensive. They're going to get to call a couple plays. They're going to have a play sheet. And Corey, it's like Corey Simon, yeah, and Peter yeah, Warwick. Yeah. Um, so they're going to get to call a couple plays, have a little bit of fun. That's a and great those, team. That team's underrated in FSU, the annals of FSU history, if you will. They uh, the, that the tends word. to be a lot of the depth, 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 depth pieces uh, yeah. from the from the roster. So I would expect to see a lot of the a lot of the uh, walk ons and and younger guys participating in that port of the, portion of the scrimmage. DJU should be long gone by that point, but we may get to see. A new quarterback. Well, hold, hold on a second because I want to talk about that. You're okay. right. That's an interesting development. Obviously, the main the main thing that we take away, and we'll talk about how to watch and what we take away. But it's like individual performances, right? You're probably yeah. you're not going to see like whatever their game plan is going to be against Georgia Tech in Ireland, but you still get to see one on run reps like. Yeah. AZ Thomas versus like Malik Benson, things like this, Roydell Williams versus DJ Lundy, stuff like that. So you get to see individual performances. I and think- there's kind of a there's a bummer on this one, Kev. One second before I get to you. <laughs> because two of the guys that we really wanted to see yeah. was Brock Glenn with some more seasoning, and then true freshman Luke Cromanhawk. Unfortunately, both those two guys have injuries, minor, said by Mike Norvell, so they're not going to be in the spring game. So primarily at quarterback, which is always the biggest part, the biggest story of your team, it's going to be DJ Uyangalale. I refuse to call him DJU. I think it's very lazy. And then (laughs) four-star true freshman walk-on quarterback, Trevor Jackson. So it'll be interesting. Kev, what do you think of the quarterback situation, and what were you going to say before I cut you off? Oh, I, I was going to mention that I, I think we might be able to see a little bit more than one on one. I'm I'm kind of excited. I don't I don't think you'll see a ton of this. Sorry, my dog's going crazy back there. That's all um, right. She loves spring football. <laughs> I don't think you're going to see a ton of this, but um, you, you might be able to get a feel for the direction they're trying to go with the run game. Um, Ooh. So I, I don't I don't know if that's something that we're planning on talking about later, but um, I want yeah. to. Uh, so so. I, I think that's something that you can also watch out for, but but I guess we'll talk about that later. I want to talk about uh, whatever, but scripts are dumb. We can talk about that now. Why <laughs> do you think we'll talk about the quarterbacks right after? Why do you think that we'll be able to glean kind of what direction they're going for in the run game in a spring with a head coach that really likes to keep stuff under wraps, like formationally, schematically? Why why do you think we'll be able to kind of check the vibe of the running game? I mean, because when you're when you're installing an offense, and when Mike Norvell in particular is installing an offense, you're you're putting in your base plays, and mm-hmm. uh, I, I do think this spring is is a little bit of an experiment. You've got a different quarterback who really excelled under this, you know, wide zone kind of Shanahan like offense last year. Mm-hmm. You've got a history of doing that at Memphis, but you've been a counter team this year, um, and so are the past couple of years at at FSU. But you know, now your personnel looks a little bit different. You've got these wide receivers that are that are speedsters that aren't necessarily like jump ball guys. You need to buy them time to get downfield. How do you do that? Wide zone play action. So, like to me, it makes a lot of sense to become more and more of this kind of zone focused team, outside zone duo, inside zone kind of focus. Where um, th- I think that fits the personnel, and I think while it won't be concrete, you're going to see them run everything. Like they have every spring game, they they run outside zone, inside zone, counter. I think you'll see what they kind kind of what they're feeling best. You know, I, I think mm-hmm. they're going to kind of lean in a certain direction, and and you might we might be able to kind of disertain. You know, like is this going to be the direction they get, choose to go in? Interesting, Adam. Do you agree? You think we might see even a little bit more under center type stuff? 
Um, yeah, I mean, I don't think they're going to try to like, they're not trying to hide things. The, the, they're just not game planning for anything. So they're right. going to go it's into this game. Base, base, base. Right. Yeah. They're going to go into this game. They're going to run base, very basic stuff. They're going to, if, <laughs> all right, I don't want to take any shots, but if you watch the Miami spring game, <laughs> it was very hey, vanilla. Kept it simple. Very vanilla. It kept it simple. It was very vanilla. Um, and I believe that was on purpose. Mike Norvell is going to coach his football team and try to get them better. And they're going to run their plays. They're just not going into this spring game with a game plan. So they're going to go out and they're going to, the game plan is going to be, they want to get looks at these certain things and, and get, get it on tape. Um, yep. So, get so that they can, guys. so that they can coach it and correct it and run it better later. Um, as opposed to trying to like fool somebody or hide something from someone. Is that sure. stupid? Uh, you take care of yourself. So, yeah, I mean, I think you're going to see. I mean, I think you'll probably see Cato. You'll probably see inside zone. You'll probably see outside zone. It wouldn't shock me to see duo either. Um, but some of it's going to be dictated by what the hell they've got available to them. Um, yeah. On the line, you go out there. Yeah. You go out there with an extremely makeshift offensive line because guys are dinged up and they're holding that, holding you know, holding them out for the spring game, um, or you know, because you've got your rosters divided up, whatever. You know, you're going to try to run for success you're going to try to do things that guys can have some level of success with so that will be dictated by what's available uh, at them uh, personnel wise but yeah i don't i don't think that you're not going to do a lot formationally like you're going to maybe sit on some of that stuff you're going to be very basic with your formations but um you know your run games your run game you're going to go do it it's going to be able to take no matter what so yeah, and that's one thing, too, when we talk about like how to actually watch a spring game so that you're not getting kind of yeah. fool's gold by what you see. You really have to pay attention, even when they're running a play. If it's successful, you really got to look at the matchups. If it's your first yeah. string guard against your third string defensive tech, you really got to look at who's going against who before you judge. You have to actually watch it with mm -hmm. almost more of a keen eye than you would like a regular game. Yeah. But we'll, we'll get to that, Kev. I want to talk about the quarterbacks. You got some film of Trevor Jackson. He's a very interesting prospect. He was a he was a four star kid, a blue chip that is walking on as the second quarterback in Florida State's class last year. That's unique in and of itself. And I think that he's going to be a guy. Whereas I think I think the pecking order set of yeah. DJ Brock, Luke, whatever order that is. I mean, those are the top three. I think this is going to be a kid after the spring game that people are going to be talking about a lot in the off season, just because I think he's going to be really exciting. So let's see why. Yeah, he's, he's an athletic kid. Uh, there was some clay Fink had some clips from a practice today in the cat and mouse drill. He was juking guys out of their yeah, shoes. Very shifty. I like it. He's yeah. a shifty guy. You bring him in as a project, especially as a walk on. Um, and if he develops into to be, to be Jordan Travis, 2.0, then you hit on something. It's house not, money, dude. Yeah. Kev, you're yeah. muted, by the way. Yeah, it's house money. What do we see here, Kev? Um, yeah, so he's 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 an athletic kid. It, it really stands out in practice. You know, he he certainly doesn't look like a walk-on. I mean, he was he was a four-star for for a reason. Um <clears throat> he's he's got a decent arm. You'd like to see, you know, a little bit more kind of a pull down on it so you know these are his first few clips uh ideally what i'm looking for you know for, for a quarterback to to be a realistic decent downfield passer is, is to make throws a little bit more like that consistently um you'd like to hit for him to hit this this kid in stride so he's not having to lay out to catch this ball um but uh the, the arm strength there is there the athleticism is there um I, I think that he's, you know, I think he's got some work to do as as a true as someone who you can trust to be a true downfield passer. I see, like, like there, like that that doesn't need to be so much air under it, right? Um, and and it, that that's kind of a, a consistent theme. But he's got the tools, and that's that's kind of what you're looking for 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 a kid in in this position. I mean, <laughs> a I, nice it, throw, man. Yeah, yeah, he's 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 got the abilities. He competed at the. I think he was he's an elite, elite eleven level. finalist. Yeah, and I think he, he won the. I think he won the rail competition. Yes, the rail shot. Which yeah. what is that for people who don't know what that is, Adam? It sounds vaguely sexual. <laughs> 
I don't know what the hell they call it. It's um, it's like a seam throw, right? Yeah. Isn't it a long seam yeah. throw? Yeah. I thought it was the cover too. Is that the rail? I, I don't call know. The rail to me is. Uh, is that on the seams? Cover three seams? I mean, that's what I'm talking about. That's the kind of throw you, you want to see him make. Um, but just, it, it, it could be. I don't know. I don't pay attention to a whole lot of the elite. That's, levels, a, that's a good ball. It's an easy completion, but it's a good ball. Yeah, but you think about Jordan Travis in 2022. Yeah, I mean, like this, in, in this type, this level of prospect coming out of high school, he's already got ahead of like, this is a good development coach. What, 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 what throws has he been successful on? RPO post a couple of times. He's thrown a couple of nice deep balls. And oh, he just threw a, he just threw a, a deep crosser. Or, that's uh, the best uh, ball from the, of, the, of the tape, and he's got it hidden here. It's a lot of distance, man. That's not an easy throw. But that's he's got right on him. There's, there's um, some arm strength there. Which is, you know, you can work with that stuff. You get his get his footwork right. His footwork's not very good. Feet are just kind of real sloppy. Yeah, oftentimes with these these high school programs, that they kind of allow them to do that. Oh, now this is the that's some that's fun stuff, man. Like that's fun. like I see him doing that in the spring game, and people like thinking he's going to be quarterback too in the summer and stuff. Like this is going to be like one of those spring game football legends. I feel like. Yeah, could be. He's a true freshman, and he's a walk-on. Who is that? God, he has a little it. bit of pedigree. So I wish I could think of the kid that had like a great spring game. That running back, he was always the kids that would like that would host all the recruits that came in. I can't think of what his name is. He was a walk-on. Uh, yeah, I, I know you know who I'm talking about. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, but he like people were like, "This is the guy." After the spring, he's going to be like a spring game legend. I feel after that. That's my bold prediction. Well, let's hope so. Let's hope he goes on balls out. I like the I like the tools, man. There's one. You keep it simple for him. Let him run around a little bit. I wonder if he'll be a guy that they allow contact to. Well, they did. Mike Norvell is tradition. He did let that happen with true freshmen in the past, right? Like he let. Well, that I guess that was during. A yeah, but I don't remember Brock him, Purdy. Hurt I don't remember him doing it in the Chubba spring Purdy. game. Yeah, I don't think so. You're right. I got that confused. Yeah, that's when Chuba hurt himself. And yeah, I was in the scrimmage. He's been on a sojourn. Um, yeah, dude, these are fun yeah. tools. This is gonna be a yeah, fun kid to nice watch football. in the spring game. He's gonna entertain Dope Campbell. Kevin's All right, neighbor. let's let's talk about um, how our fans, how our educated viewers, the most educated, how should they watch a spring game in general? We already kind of told you, hey, don't take it too seriously as far as don't live and die by every single play, the success, like the, the offense is great. If they score a touchdown, the defense sucks. It, it's <laughs> tough because it's like a zero sum game, but I don't want to also say discount it completely because there have been times. And I think the most famous example of a spring game performance portending greatness was Jameis Winston. His coming mm-hmm. out party really was that spring game. So there are things that you can glean, Kev. Wh- what should people be more concerned with? Is it play success, unit success, individual matchups? Like how how are our viewers? How should they watch this spring game? Yeah, I think for the most part, you should have fun with it. Um, it's it's a good opportunity to see you know what you've got coming up. You know, I I mean I I wrote this whole thing on what I saw from Miami and Florida spring games on on the board uh but at the end of the day there's only so much you can see out of it uh so it's gonna look messy at times it's gonna look clean at times they're gonna throw picks because you know for florida for example they basically every third down they ran a little uh hitch all hitches concepts that just turned at the sticks and they're trying to hit hitches for first downs and they their quarterbacks threw two picks off that it's like that's not really a quarterback problem that's because they were running a vanilla offense, you know, so things like that, you got to kind of keep in mind and take, 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 you know, take them for what they're worth. Uh, I wouldn't get too worried about, you know, picks that don't look like obvious misthrows. Um, but then like, I do think there's, there's some little things you can take some one-on-one matchups. Like we were talking earlier, like how does buyers look out? Out, out on the edge how does he look running counter can he get to the second level mm-hmm. 
you know, how does Kyle Morlock look blocking? You know, how 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 are these things coming together? Um, and luckily for you guys, I, I think we're going to be trying to tease that out over the next few weeks. And our goal is to, you know, take everything we can from the spring game and have their own videos on it. Oh, we're going to be like a Native American. We're going to use every single piece of the buffalo. Like, absolutely. <laughs> every, the horn, the skin, the nuts, all of it. I'm with you. To me, watching a spring game, oh, there's there's some things. Leave the nuts alone. <laughs> <laughs> have fun. Uh, there's some things that's, like you said, the formations, oh, like if the, the offensive line crushing the D or whatever. You don't know. Like, you got to look who's playing who. But the one-on-one matchups. How is AZ versus Malik Benson? How is, you know, Shaheem Brown in space? How is Jalen Lucas? How does he look at matched up on a DB yeah. or maybe running the football in traffic? How are your, how are your top tier offensive and defensive linemen? How are they clanging heads against each other? How is a kid like a young, exciting prospect, like a Lucas Simmons, who's gotten a lot of praise in camp more than we expected. Mm-hmm. How does he hold up in a, maybe a rep against Patrick Payton or Sione Lolohea? The individual stuff, and I'm glad that Kevin mentioned it, we are going to chop up this spring game because those one-on-one matchups, how they look, how they move athletically, strength-wise, quickness, that's that's stuff that does translate. And those guys are only going to get quicker, stronger, faster with some more time with Josh Storms. Adam, is there a particular player, offense, defense, whatever, that you're actually excited to see compete in this format on Saturday? Mm. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give one for both. Um, I, obviously, I'm excited to see uh, Marvin Jones Jr. on defense. I've talked about him quite a bit. Coming over, the tape out of Georgia wasn't enticing, but I have have couched a lot of that with he's not a player who's had a healthy offseason. There's growth to his game. Let's see where he's at. Um, sure. While trying to temper – because I feel like a lot of people have been like, oh, he's going to come in. He's a five-star. He's going to come in and go crazy. I think that that was unrealistic. So I've tried to temper some of that uh, with my commentary on his game. But I'm excited to see what he does. Um, I was thrilled to get him out of the portal for Florida State to land him out of the portal. And I'm really excited to see what he looks like on Saturday. Um, so hopefully we get a good long run uh, of him that we can break that tape down. Um, and then on offense, I mean, I, I think that I'm excited to see Jalen Lucas. I'm excited to see Malik Benson. I'm excited to see those guys. I'll let Kev talk about them. I'm excited to see Jeremiah Byers if he's taking another step. I'm excited to see Kyle Morlock if he's blocking better, kind of understanding the concepts of what they're trying to accomplish and where he needs to be. Um, I'm, this running game needs to get back to being efficient, and so I'm going to be paying most of my attention to that. I would say for me, before I go to your, you, Kev, because your answers are going to be better than mine, the guys that I'm looking to see, they're all kind of in like a tier. It's the guys that either need to ascend or have the potential to ascend. So for me on offense, I'm going to be really interested to see a guy like Jalen Early. How does Jalen Early look? Because we had some flashes at the end of the game, at the end of the year last year, he came in with some injuries, and I thought he looked really promising. I want to see how a kid like Jalen Early does against Florida State's first-team defensive line. I think that would be interesting to see. And then a kid like Blake Nicholson, choose Cryer, that second level of linebackers. How are they matched up against a kid like a Jalen Lucas or a Lawrence Toafili? Guys that are really deadly in space. Those are dudes like a kid like Blake Nicholson. His flash. Adam loves my pronunciation of the name. I do. I know, I'm a professional at it. I'm a, I've been doing it for years, baby. I'm the original Polynesian cheerleader. <laughs> anyway, Lawrence Toafili in the open field. Blake Nicholson, a kid, flashed multiple times through multiple practice reports. When we watched him on the field, the game speed, right? Sometimes wasn't in the right place. Has that gotten mm. cleaned up? Like those, those are kids that I really want to see. I love watching, you know what you got from like AZ, Fentrell, Patrick yeah. Payton, like Shaheem Brown. You know what you got and you know it's good. But guys, like I mentioned before, kids like Conrad Hussey, I love watching kids like on the come up. And those are the ones that I'm going to be looking for. The unknowns, right? Because those are the guys that could take that really competent <laughs> floor that Kev talked about and maybe push that ceiling higher. This team has an 
some untapped potential that we don't know about yet because we haven't seen it. So I can't wait to get some more information. What about you, Kev? Who are you excited to see? Yeah, I'm going to go back to the uh, Jalen Lucas comment AB made earlier. I mean, this isn't so much a guy that I think, you know, makes or breaks this team on any level. Um, but I, I think he's a guy that can be really exciting. Um, I think he's the kind of guy that, you know, he might get six or eight touches a game, but one or two of those might, might be housed, you know, like he's the kind of guy that Norvell will use to get in space and he will use that space, you know? Um, <clears throat> I mean, we've just been hearing reports. I mean, we've seen videos. I've seen them in person of, you know, Norvell being excited about him being, you know, a weapon that that truly can be used in a multitude of ways. And while you won't see all of those ways in the spring game, you'll get a vibe for kind of where they want to slot them in, what they what they want to use them for. And truly, I, I don't think Indiana, I, I, I think this situation is pretty close to the George, Johnny Wilson situation mm -hmm. where people said, well, he's not that good. He was at Arizona state and they barely used him. Well, I, they underused him and that was clear. They didn't know what they're doing. Um, I totally agree, man. From that, from that film that we watch of Jalen Lucas, even those offensive reps. Yeah. For a team like Indiana, man, there was a lot of juice left to squeeze like that. He's a matchup nightmare. Like I, I'm with you, Kev. It, it really, that Johnny Wilson's a great comparison because you could see it from the film. It's like, why aren't they throwing the ball to this kid more? And everybody would say it's because of the drops. It's because of that. It's like, well, get the kid more reps because he's that talented. Yeah. So I, I think they will. I think they're willing to invest the reps. Um, and so we'll see that I, you'll see a little bit of just what makes him so electric. And he's one of those guys where it's like, even in the special teams part of practice, He's worth watching. Um, and so, uh, yeah, he's, he's just a fun, fun, fun athlete to, to mm -hmm. kind of see on the field. And I, I think I'm going to be I'm really excited. That's that's going to be one of the things I'm most excited for in the season as a whole. Um, a name on defense I haven't heard yet that I think is is a make or break player for you is a guy that can if he shows out, can really solidify that defense is Sean Murphy. Um, Ooh, good call. So you've got DJ Lundy, and then who's your number two linebacker? Well, they brought in Sean Murphy to be that guy. He was, you know, really, really sought after recruit. Didn't play much at Alabama. We watched his film, go back and see it. I'm really high on him. I think he had pretty decent instincts at Alabama. But how well does he move in space? How how quickly can he diagnose holes? Does he get lost? That's a big thing. That's a we've seen that over and over while these film reviews is often what makes a you know decent linebacker into a great linebacker is just reducing the amount of times that you're lost or are not filling the right gap. You know, what these kids are college students. They're they're not perfect at this, and linebacker is a really cerebral position and you know just like quarterback you can have all the physical tools but can you put it together so I, my big question for him is like is he consistently in the right gap is he in the right place because you're you're gonna need him to be able to produce so blake nicholson so juice crier can can take their time easing into the season I get you not have so many high leverage reps for the younger guys have that dude with that's a little bit older, like Sean Murphy, just with that line that he has in front of him, we project that to be a really stout run stopping unit. Just take advantage of the space that they're going to give you make the clean read and just be in the right spot. So I'm with you. That's a great pick. Kev. I can't believe we haven't talked about him yet. All right. Final question before we get on out of here, <clears throat> Adam, mm -hmm. who's going to be the player that at the end of this spring game, is going to be hyped up, talked about, clipped up in reels, maybe overhyped, or maybe it will be like the first chapter of his great legacy at Florida State. Who's going to be the guy that is going to be on the every fan's lips after the spring game? Grady Kelly. Grady, the very Clay Fink-like wow, answer. Clay Why do you Fink. say that? That's a good one. I don't know. This just strikes me as one of these dudes that's going to play balls to the wall the entire spring game. And people are going to get so 
he's going to get he's going to get matchups against some guys that maybe aren't uh, the number ones, and mm-hmm. I think he's going to make some plays. Um, we'll see. They probably won't do a whole lot of stunning, so maybe not. But I don't know. It's just the first name that popped in my head. Like it totally fits the bill. Like straight I like up, it, dude. have I him like straight it. up Bud Thacker bench press prior to the freaking you know what whatever <laughs> that shit show was years ago. Bud Thacker, yeah, oh like, man, get him out there. You can see this dude's gonna be a meathead. Like just let it turn him loose. Oh, I love Bud Thacker. My freshman year, uh, I think our first game was against Clemson when I was at Florida State. They had like a pep rally in Tully, and they were playing Clemson. It's just they gave Bud Thacker a microphone. He goes, "All right, guys, we gotta we gotta play Clemson this weekend. So Seminoles like to eat steaks. We're gonna get ourselves some Tiger steak." <laughs> that was it. It was just like Billy Madison saying "nip high football rules" for an entire speech, but he screamed out "Tiger steak." So anytime <laughs> you can do a Bud Thacker reference on me. That brings me back to some golden time. So if Grady Kelly's the second coming of Bud Thacker, somebody get the Tiger Steak NIL t-shirts, man, because that brings me back. Kev, who are the people going to be talking about in your estimation after the spring game? I mean, it's it's got to be DJ. I mean, that's, you know, maybe we might get a nice cut up of someone on Twitter, QB1 question mark, where they just inexplicably zoom in on them every play. I know what you're you know? referencing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we might get one of those, you know, just showing how special of a, just a player he is. Just <laughs> a five yard slant where the DB is <laughs> 800 tackles. And it's like, yo dog, we're back. Yeah. Five rings. <laughs> Maybe he'll get 300 yards of screen passes. Oh, we'll I call him what we're referencing. Oh, well, he's QB one. And, um, so <laughs> yeah, uh, DJ, he's going to, that's, that's the talking point, right? How does this, how does he come in? How does he replace Jordan Travis? Uh, How how does he take control of this team? I mean, he's the quarterback. It's the, he's the guy, right? So most of our conversation on, on, you know, Sunday or Monday, whenever we break this film down, it's going to be about uh, DJ. It's going to be because he's going to be the player. He's the most important player on the field. Um, but other than the obvious answer, it's Quindarius Jones. Oh, oh brother. Oh, uh, Kev, full uh, Here we on. go. QAnon, Kev. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Oh, uh, yeah, I like Quindarius. It's no secret. I'm excited to see him play. I'm I'm hoping he gets to match up on some of FSU's number one receivers and, and show people. Clamps them. Yeah, clamps them. So. That's that's you that's, non Darius. That's my Grady <laughs> Kelly pick. <laughs> I love it. My pick is actually, like I said, not not the guy who's going to be the most important for next season, but the dude that's going to be like, there's going to be some six spring game highlights. I think it's going to be a quarterback. I'm going with Trevor Jackson. Well, that's he's going to he's going to drop some bombs on some walk on cornerbacks. <laughs> People that did not watch our video and aren't educated aren't going to look who the matchups were, like who Malik Benson was bossing or something, because he's going to get a lot of reps more than he would have got with those two quarterback injuries. But he's going to be the second coming of Michael Vick on Twitter because they didn't watch this video. And I feel like he's going to get a ton of talk about him. And I think it's going to be fun, man. The offseason is going to be fun. We're here for fun. Kev mentioned it. Watch this game. Crack a crack a couple and have some fun, man. You've earned it. You've made it through spring football. Enjoy this showcase. If you're in Tallahassee, you you could have a lot of fun. I'm really jealous of you, man. You will have a lot of fun there. Enjoy yourself. We'll be here to break it down. I think we're doing an uh, instant reaction. Yep. We're going to break down the full game. We're going to chop it up and look at all those individual player-on-player matchups. Transfer portal season is really going to start kicking into gear, I think, uh, very soon. So, of course, we'll take a look at all the new additions and 60% off, guys. Get on Knowles247.com. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Subscribe to the Knowles247 YouTube channel. Get all up in there and put your notifications on because the content is too fast and too furious, cuh. And we are going to be here with you. Enjoy yourself. Have a wonderful spring game. We'll break down all the the results. And, of course, keep chopping.